Mr. Speaker, this Friday, a living icon of freedom will turn 90 years old. His birthday already has been celebrated at more than 20 different charity events around the world. Now it's time for the United States Congress to rise in its voice of praise of Mr. Nelson Mandela. In recognition of his remarkable life and the contributions that he has made to humankind. His struggle on behalf of black South Africans confronted with the horrific system of racial hatred is legendary. It landed him in prison under harsh conditions for 27 years. Mr. Mandela will be remembered for many things, but perhaps the words he spoke at his trial sums up his effort best. He said, during my lifetime, I have dedicated myself to this struggle of the African people. I have fought against white domination and I have fought against black domination. I have cherished the ideals of a democratic and free society in which all people live together in harmony with equal opportunities. It is an idea which I hope to live for and to achieve, but if need be, it is an ideal which I am prepared to die for. Mr. Speaker, death did not claim Nelson Mandela that day or in the decades of dismal imprisonment to follow. Instead, he grew to become a figure almost larger than life, an international symbol of an oppressed people's thirst for justice. He joined the pantheon of inspirational figures whose legendary and legacy belongs to all humankind. Mahat Gandhi, Mother Teresa, Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And as a measure of what he meant to us, Nelson Mandela's liberation and subsequent rise to become president of a free and democratic South Africa were greeted with joy and near disbelief around the world when it occurred. Mr. Speaker, Nelson Mandela was born in a small village in Eastern Cape of South Africa. His family belonged to the Bembo dynasty, a Kosa noble bloodline in South Africa. He was well educated, earned a law degree, set up a law practice with his longtime friend who spent 27 years with him on Robbins Island, Walter Sisulu. As a young man, Nelson Mandela joined the African National Congress which was established in 1912 to fight for justice and equality for Africans against discrimination and unjust laws prescribed by the minority European settlers. For decades, leaders of the ANC challenged the segregation system imposed on them and demanded through petition to the courts and to the British royalty and government the freedoms and opportunities afforded the whites who dominated South Africa at that time. In 1944, Nelson Mandela, along with other young, educated Africans, formed the African National Congress Youth League, in large measure to shift the traditional ANC role from an elite organization to a mass-based African nationalist movement. After the 1948 elections of the Africana National Party, racial segregation laws that had been adopted incoherently were codified into a comprehensive segregation policy called apartheid, creating major challenges for Mandela, the African National Congress, and its allies. Apartheid institutionalized racism through physical and social segregation of all ethnic groups. It codified race classifications, prohibited inter interracial marriage, and reserved certain jobs for whites. While black Africans comprise 75% of the population, under apartheid, they were allowed only to live on 13% of the worst land in the country. All public facilities were segregated by race. Black Africans were forced to carry identification cards and forbidden to be in towns preserved for whites unless they had explicit permission to go there. In 1964, when fellow leaders of the ANC and its armed wing were arrested, Mandela was brought to trial with other comrades for plotting to overthrow the government by violent means. He and his seven comrades were in prison for life for their leadership opposing apartheid. In 1989, on the strength of South Africans' own definition of the African National Congress, the United States government listed the ANC as one of 52 organizations around the world as the most notorious terrorist group. 
I am pleased to say that two weeks ago, President Bush signed into law a bill introduced by Chairman Berman of our committee that several of our House colleagues joined in co-sponsoring to erase this injustice, particularly Representative Barbara Lee was instrumental in ensuring the bill's passage in the Senate. Now Nelson Mandela and others who supported the effort of the ANC will no longer face additional security measures based solely on their association with the ANC while traveling to this country, long overdue. In 1993, Nelson Mandela received the Nobel Peace Prize, which he shared with former South African President F.W. de Klerk. He also has received the Order of Merit, the Order of Merit, and the Order of St. John's from Queen Elizabeth II, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom from George W. Bush. Today, President Mandela is revered around the world and continues to represent the values of freedom, justice, and liberation for all people. He has become the cha champion in the fight against HIV and AIDS through his foundation. He continues to work on behalf of everyday men, women, and children so that they can enjoy lives of freedom from injustice, sickness, and want. Mr. Speaker, I strongly urge my colleagues in the House to support the measure recognizing Nelson Mandela's unique contributions to humankind, and I will reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman from New Jersey.